Okay, so um, I got I did get some initial feedback from some folks on LinkedIn about these questions, and um, so I just right here at the beginning, I just let everybody know the questions are not perfect. Um, so that there's, sometimes there's typos, maybe there the 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 answers more than one answer could be the right answer, um, or the question could be worded a little better. Um, so I'm not I I recognize that there's room for improvement. Uh, what I like to tell people is that's real life. Uh, you will also find that is true on the actual exams. So uh, although I admit these questions are not perfect, uh, they are probably good preparation for what you're really going to see on the test. Um, so anyway, I'll just throw that out at the beginning. Um, so what the other thing I'm going to try and do on these <clears throat> uh, sample exams is uh, each exam is going to focus on two or maybe three at the most kind of kind of knowledge areas or skills. Um, so that you guys will be able to kind of evaluate where you're at on a particular subject area. And the questions aren't necessarily grouped that way on the exam, uh, but you can see, so like this exam dealt basically with, you know, some basic knowledge of field surveying and uh, map projections, and then, you know, uh, st uh, stationing, you know, being able to calculate stations and do some coordinate geometry, basically, uh, is what I was testing on this exam. So we might do others that are focused on construction or boundary or control error analysis, right? But that, that so this exam was was kind of basic knowledge of field surveys and uh, map projections, and then, you know, working with station and doing some coordinate geometry calcs. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started here. Question number one, uh, what is a Rhinex file used for? So the answer is C. Uh, a Rhinex file is used to transfer static data between uh, software programs. So it's actually a file format defined by NGS, um, and you, it's it's actually a text file. So you can open a Rhinex file and read it in Notepad. Um, you can actually hand edit them, um, and so uh, that's what it's like. I tell people it's like a DXF file, only it's for GPS data. And uh, actually, NGS has a, a pretty recent specification out uh, for I think they call it GVX, which is a, a kind of a Rhinex file for uh, RTK data, which is cool. Okay, so that's the answer. The answer is C. Question number two, what type of instrument is the most appropriate? Oh, let me go back. So question one, I'm just, that's, I'm kind of testing your basic knowledge about, um, you know, what kind of data is produced as part of a field survey. Okay, so question two, what type of instrument is the most appropriate to establish accurate elevations over short to medium distances? The answer is A, differential level. Okay, so I'm trying to determine you know, what you understand about the different types of instruments we use and the different types of errors that they have, right? So if I had said, uh, uh, if I had said long distances here um, and fast static was an answer, that might be appropriate. So like over long distances, you're probably gonna get more accurate elevations after a fast static survey than you are out of differential leveling, depending on how it's done. So there's a reason why that wasn't an answer in this list. Um, some of you might have checked B, total station. Um, you can carry pretty accurate elevations now with the total station, but as a general rule, uh, the results aren't going to be as good as, you know, what that's what they call trig leveling, right? Those those elevations won't be as accurate as a differential level as a general rule over short distances. Okay, question number three, what type of survey is most likely to require a land title report? You will also hear those referred to as a preliminary report or preliminary title report, the answer is C. Okay, it's an Alta NSPS land title survey. You can't do one of those without a land title report. Now, you might also use that for answer B, okay, which is a boundary survey, but not every boundary survey necessarily requires a title report. So if you're not mapping easements, you may not need a title report. You're just doing a survey of the parent parcel. Okay, it's always a good idea to get a title report, but that's why the answer is C. Okay, and uh, a D is just something I made up. Okay, so that's just a distractor, right? So um, some people will, will grab that answer because uh, they don't know what a land title survey is actually called. So just testing your knowledge there, the basic types of surveys. Okay, question four, what two operations should be performed at the end of each total station occupation? So we're trying to figure out, trying to test your field knowledge here. So the correct answer is D, check the height of instrument and check the back site. Okay, so now there may be other things that uh, two other thing you know there there's other things you may want to do at the end of the setup. But the way I tried to structure this question though, 
um, if you do any of those other things, uh, you're going to be in trouble, right? So you, you don't want to re-level the instrument, right? Um, or calibrate the, the compensator at the end of a setup, right? Because that means you're you're not going to get a good check on you. You're not going to get a realistic check on your backside. Okay, so we always try and tell our folks, hey, before you tear down, double check that HI because that's one of the most common errors in a total station survey is a busted HI. Double check your HI and check your back sight. Um, if, if you get a really bad back sight check, then we know that we may need to reshoot some of the observations that were made from that setup. Okay, question five. What type of survey is most commonly used as part of the National Flood Insurance Program in the United States? So again, this is just testing your knowledge about the types of surveys. So National Flood Insurance Program, that's the program that we use to regulate building in the floodplain in the United States and to provide federal insurance, right, or federally backed insurance for floods. And the answer is B, uh, it's an elevation certificate. Okay, that's the most commonly used. Um, now, in some places, because of the, the flood regulations, you may have to do a pad cert. Okay, that's where you go in and certify the pad before they set the forms and pour the slab. You may also do a survey of a floodway. Um, uh, but uh, that's not going to be the most common type of survey. Okay, so that, that, that the most common type of survey we do for the NFIP is an elevation certificate. Okay. Question six, uh, this is just testing your basic understanding of, of a public lands system survey. How many sections in a township? The answer is A, 36. Okay. Uh, so question seven is, is again, a kind of a field procedure question, but you got to do some basic math there. So, and I have to apologize that the set of problems that initially went out a week or two ago, there was a typo in this. So uh, if if you couldn't figure out the answer, that's why I I had a, a bad uh, I had a bad benchmark elevation. Okay, so if you got a differential level setup with an instrument height of 5.20 and an elevation of 32.6, that means the, the the level plane, the line of sight in the level is at 32.6, <clears throat> and you observe a benchmark with an elevation of 33.3 feet. What should the value of this foresight be? In other words, what are you going to see on the rod? <laughs> so. You just got to do some simple addition and subtraction there, right? So uh, we've got um, our instrument height is uh, 5.2 feet. Let's see. You know what? I actually this this I actually messed this question up. All right. So because I gave you the I gave the I gave you the elevation here. So this this is actually going to be a bad question. I apologize, guys. So. This is a little bit. This is a little bit tricky, right? So what I wanted to do was was give you the elevation and the HI, but if you, if I give you the elevation, you don't need the HI, right? So you're actually not going to be able to see this benchmark because <laughs> it's got the wrong. It's going to be higher than your than your level plane. So let's just fix this real quick, just so you guys can see how it was supposed to work. So let's make it 27. All right. Okay, now this works. So all you got to do for this is take, you know, the, the elevation of your of your level plane, right? The line of sight of the level is 32.6 and you just minus 27.3. Okay, 5.3 is going to be your answer, right? So we'll just fix this. Okay, now I messed that question up, but the reason I put this height of instrument in there is because a lot of people will, if you're if you're not careful, they'll add this to the elevation of the level plane, right? And you don't want to do that in this particular problem. So you only add the instrument height if I had given you the elevation of a back site, right? Then you would add the instrument height, come up with your elevation of your level plane, subtract the foresight elevation and come up with your with your foresight reading. So I apologize for dorking that question up. Okay, question eight. What is the primary purpose of the state plane coordinate system? The answer is D. So it's to reduce distortions caused by the shape of the earth in typical land surveys. So a lot of people don't know that, right? We use state plane coordinates a lot for GIS now, but the state plane coordinate systems are designed by NGS, the National Geodetic Survey, and they are for land surveyors. They are for plane surveys uh, over fairly small areas. Okay? And that's why state plane coordinates were, were developed. So that's testing your knowledge of, of map, you know, kind of coordinate systems and map projections. Question nine and question 10 are also that, that type of question. So question nine, what type of solid 
is used for the projection in the California coordinate system. It's a cone. So we use uh, what's called a Lambert, Lambert conformal conic. So it's a cone that gets unfolded. Okay, if you're not from California, don't feel bad if you missed that question. You should know the type of, of shape, 3D shape that's used for your own state, right? Um, so in California, we use a cone. Different states use different, different shapes. So question 10, same kind of question, but it's for the UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator. That's a, 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 a global, a, project, a projection that's, that covers all parts of the globe. And uh, it's a cylinder. So it's a series of cylinders rotated around the Earth. Um, that's that's uh, how they do the uni Universal Transverse Mercator. That's a pretty common, it's probably the most common coordinate system um, for for if you need a coordinate system that you can use to to do mapping around uh, around the Earth, right? So UTM is probably the most common. All right, question eleven is about horizontal control surveys. So you got to meet an accuracy of one to fifty thousand. What's the misclosure error if you have a geom geometric network where the total length of the baseline in the network is four point seven three miles? So you got to understand a little bit about how you measure the accuracy of surveys and you got to do some math here, right? So what we want to do is we want to take uh, the total length of the of the network in miles, so 4.73 times 5280, okay, gives us the amount of feet, okay? And then you want to divide that by 50,000, okay? So it's answer D, okay? So, that's the, the the maximum error. Whoop, that's the maximum amount of error you can have in your survey to meet that one to fifty thousand uh, accuracy standard, right? So it's based on what the, the basic principle here is: the bigger your survey, your control survey, right, the more uh, the more allowable error you have, right? So that allowable error value is going to go up as the the total length of the baselines in your surveys go up. Okay, and so pretty typical. Allowed values are one to 10,000, one to 20,000, one to 50,000. Those are not uncommon values. Okay, that's kind of an older way they used to evaluate the accuracy of surveys before we had best fit adjustments like least squares. But you should still understand those basic concepts and, and know how to do that math. Okay. All right, question 12. This is another public lands, just kind of testing your basic knowledge of public lands here. Um, in a public in the public land survey system, a quarter section corner is typically used to divide a standard section into quarters. That's why they're called quarter corners, right? Okay, so yep, that that's uh, pretty simple. Question thirteen. This is another map projection. Question: A secant map projection is the answer is uh, C. It's a projection that slices through the Earth's surface. Okay, so it it passes just underneath uh, the Earth's surface. So, for example, in California, our conic projections are also secant so they pass through the earth's surface where the where the secant secant projection intersects the earth's surface those are our standard parallels here in california so the way you can remember that is a secant as a, a secant um is uh cuts across the circle touches touches the circle in two points okay that might help you remember that all right, so another map projection question here, question 14, a typical secant map projection oriented in north-south direction will have two standard parallels, right? So it's going to slice through the earth. If this is the north pole, it's going to slice through the earth profile view, and you're going to have two standard parallels, right? Those are going to be lines of latitude, standard parallels, okay? If you flipped it, if you had a secant projection that was oriented east-west, it would cut through on lines of longitude, okay? Those would be standard meridians. Okay, question 15, uh, this is another, do you understand the kinds of instruments, right? The types of instruments, what type of instrument is typically used to establish accurate horizontal coordinates? And they give you that same lift, list from the question above. The answer is B, total station, okay? As a general rule, if you follow good procedures, you're gonna get better answers out of a total station. Again, static GNSS or fast static GNSS isn't in the list because over the long distances, that may be more accurate than a total station survey. And because your errors in a total station survey are going to accumulate with the size of the survey. Question 16, what type of survey results in a cut sheet as a work product? Again, just testing your knowledge of, of the types of surveys. The answer is B, or I'm sorry, D, a construction staking survey. It's going to give you a cut sheet. Okay, cut fills. All right, now we get to the uh, the problems for this diagram. So here's the diagram. 
and I, I kind of give you this table uh, here with, with some, some missing values, right? So you got two storm drain manholes here. There's actually, there's three storm drain manholes. Uh, I give you a, 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 a center line alignment. I tell you the road's 40 feet wide. We got some catch basins here, an area drain, an outfall. And um, I give you a couple uh, northings and eastings and uh, a few stations. And you got to calculate basically the missing northings and eastings and the missing stations. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through these. Okay, so uh, you got to do some construction layout. You got to use diagram one and answer the following questions. What is the station of storm drain maintenance hole number 12? So let's go look at that. So here's maintenance hole 12. I don't give you that station here. You got to calculate it. Okay, what you do is you can use your, I give you this station here and your northing and easting, and I give you this station here and the northing and easting. Okay, so what you can do is you can figure out, there's a couple ways to do it. You can either figure out the bearing of this line and, and use your trig, or you can just figure out, all right, for every foot I go east, how much do I go north? So kind of change and X, change and Y. Okay, so then what you can do is uh, you can figure out uh, from this coordinate and this coordinate, right? You can do your Pythagorean theorem and come up with this horizontal distance between the two manholes. Okay, and then I tell you this is station three plus 5212. You add that distance, right? And then you get your new station. Okay, and I, I cheated. I did this in CAD, so I have this in a CAD drawing. Okay, and uh, but the answer is, so the, the station for this manhole is five plus zero seven point seven two. That's the answer I got. Okay. If you got a different answer, don't do, feel free to hit me up with an email and let me know, and uh, I will double check my math. So please tell me if you got something different. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing is, uh, what's the station of storm drain catch basin 23? So here's, uh, let's see, here's station 20 or catch basin 23. I want to know what is the station for that. Now, in, that, in this case, I give you um, I give you uh, the northing and easting here, okay? So what you have to do is you have to figure out uh, what is that horizontal distance? Uh, what is that horizontal distance along the alignment, okay? And you have this northing and easting and you have this northing and easting, right? So you, you've got a little right triangle problem here and you can figure out what this length of this side is, okay? And then you're gonna subtract that from the station that you calculated for manhole 12, which we did in the answer above. Okay, so when you do that math, you get station four plus 80.41. Okay, and you can gut check these answers here, right? So, all right, that station's five plus 07. You kind of eyeball this. Yeah, I'm back about 10 feet. That answer kind of gut checks, right? All right, okay, now we're switching. So the first two you calculated stations. The next two, I ask you to calculate coordinates. So the first one is um, storm drain catch basin 21. Okay, so that's this catch basin here. Okay, and if you come down here, I tell you what station it's at. Okay, so it's at, at station three plus 30.41, and you know it's 40 feet to the left, right? To the left. Okay, so what you can do is you can take this station, three plus 30.41, and subtract it from three plus 52.12. That gives you this horizontal distance, right? That it's along the alignment. Okay, and then you know it's 40 feet over from the center line and the manholes are, you know what, there's a, I fixed this up. These are supposed to say uh, uh, five feet left. So the manholes are, are five feet to the left. Okay, so you got 35 feet from the center of the manhole to the catch basin this way. Okay, and you can use the stationing and come up with, uh, with this distance here along the alignment. Okay, so then we've got this distance along the alignment and we've got this offset here. Okay, and then we can we can use that, right, to calculate that hypotenuse and angle. And then you can do your right triangle trig and come up with the coordinate for that, right? Use your right triangle, come up with the change in northing and change in easting. And then you can use your the coordinate that's given here for manhole 12, do that math and come up with your coordinate. Okay, and I have it there, it's in the answers. Okay, and again, I just pulled these right out of CAD, so they should be good. Okay, so uh, you're going to go through the very same process uh, for catch basin 22. It's it's the exact same math, almost, except this side, you got to be careful because you're 
So it's going to be the same distance this way along the alignment, but this is going to be 45 feet, not 35, because the manhole is on the other side of the center line. So that'll that'll catch. Some people will dork this up. They'll use 40 feet for this one side of the right triangle, or they'll use 35 on both sides of the alignment. All right, so you got to watch that. You got to pay attention to detail there. Okay, but it's the same same basic right triangle math to get that coordinate value. Okay, question 21, we're going back to a station where you have to calculate a station. So they want to know, I tell you that uh, storm drain outfall number four is perpendicular to the center line alignment. And I give you the distance. And it's a uh, 59.66 feet from this manhole. And then I ask you to calculate this station. Okay, well, we already know what this station is, right? We have the station for number 12. Okay, and if this is perpendicular, it's the same station going to have a different offset okay so what you have to do is you have to add this five feet from the manhole to the center line alignment to get the, the proper offset okay so it's the same station sorry guys let me get out of there it's the same station okay but you gotta i'm sorry you gotta subtract five feet from that from that distance did i do that math wrong i think i did at a horizontal distance of let's look at it Yep, you got to add the five feet. So my answer is wrong, guys. I apologize. So it is actually 64.66 feet to the left. Okay. Okay, so same station. The station's easy because I told you this was perpendicular, right? But you've got this little five foot difference here between where the manhole's at and the alignment. You got to add that to this distance to get the appropriate offset, right? So that one's a little bit tricky. And I, you can see I went the wrong direction, right? So some of you may have done that. You may have made the mistake I made and went the wrong direction. It's 64.66 to the left. Okay, next one, we got to um, calculate a coordinate for uh, storm drain outfall number four. So it's the same storm drain outfall. This time I just want the coordinate, right? So you got to do some right triangle trig here, okay? And figure out um, what, the, what the change in northing and change in easting is of this right triangle right here, okay? And then add that subtract the change in easting and add the change in northing from this manhole coordinate for 12 that I give you in the table. And that'll give you uh, the coordinate value for the storm drain outfall. Okay. All right, let's see, 23, almost done. Okay, so this is a question where I'm asking you to calculate a slope. Okay, so I tell you the slope of the pipe connection from the uh, maintenance holes to the outfalls can't be more than 2%. And then I give you the invert, two invert elevations. Okay, so I give you this invert elevation at the manhole for this pipe. And then I give you the, the invert elevation for the outfall on the same pipe. Okay, and then I um, ask you, uh, does it meet the spec? Is it is it is it 2% or less? Okay, and so I already told you the length of the pipe. Right, the length of the pipe is 59.66 uh, feet. Okay, so it's just a, a, a simple slope problem. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, we're at uh, one end of the pipe is at 1244.52, that's the elevation. Okay, the other end of the pipe is at 1242.92. Okay, so we got 1.6 feet of fall over that pipe and it's, what did I say, 59.66. So we'll divide that by 59.66 and you can see it, it's over the tolerance. It's 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 uh, two point seven percent if you round. Okay, so no, it doesn't meet doesn't meet it. Okay, so that's just a simple simple slope calculation. You got to understand what pipe inverts are, and you got to grab the right distance there to calculate your slope. Okay. All right, question twenty four. So these get a little bit harder as you move down, right? Question twenty four. Um, I tell you what the angle is. Uh, between the center line alignment and uh, the connection between manhole 11 and area drain 36. So let's go look at that. So I'm giving you this angle. If you were to, to run a, a an angle here from the center line to this pipe, okay, I'm giving you that angle. Okay, so it's 79 degrees, 40 minutes, 22 seconds, and you can kind of gut check this, right? It's close to 90, but not quite 90. Okay, and I pulled that out of CAD, so it should be good. And then I tell you the horizontal distance between the two structures is 73.81 feet. What's the northing and easting of the area drain? 
Okay, so um, and I could have I could have worded this problem better. I, what I should have said here is the angle between uh, the pipe between uh, storm drain eleven and twelve because that would have made it a little easier. But uh, this angle here it is is it's going to be the same. The math works out the same. So what you've got here is you've got a a, a right triangle right here. Okay, and I give you this angle of the right triangle, and I think I give you a distance too. Yep. So I give you uh, this angle right here, and this hy this hypotenuse distance is the question, right? And then you got to figure out what your change in northing and what your change in easting is, and then add those to the manhole to get the, uh, to get the northing and easting. I think I'm asking you for a northing and easting there. Yep. Okay, and then I'm doing the same thing here. So very same, same structures. So area drain 36, and I'm asking you, instead of giving me the northing and easting, I'm just asking you to calculate the station and offset. Okay, and I'm not sure, hopefully I, I, I uh, did the right thing with the five foot difference there. <laughs> I think I did, I, I think I pulled that offset off a of CAD, so that one should be correct. Okay, so those are not, those are not rocket science problems, but if you're not used to doing that kind of right triangle trig and, and doing solving right triangles with Pythagorean theorem, that those could be tough. Those could be tough problems. So, but the, the key here is that can you read this diagram and figure out the right triangles you need and do the math correctly to, to come up with either the northing and eastings or the stationing, right? And this is a fairly simple example. There's there's no curves in here, there's no angle points, right? It's a straight alignment, it's a straight center line alignment. Okay. And so um the stationing, you know, the, this kind of problem where you got to convert between northings and eastings and stationings doesn't get a whole lot easier than this. The only thing I could have done to make it easier was if I would have made the alignment cardinal, either due north or due east, then the math would have been a little bit easier. You wouldn't have to do right triangle trick, but I didn't want to make it too easy. So, um, all right, any uh, any questions on the answers we covered? Uh, how'd you guys do? How'd you guys do with the, with the stationing questions, the last 10 or so questions? You guys do all right on those? Any feedback? Do I need to do I need to do a video where I work some of those, do some whiteboard math on some of those right triangle problems for you guys, or do you feel you guys feel pretty good about it? What do you guys think? Everybody's pretty quiet. We had about eight people, but okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't want to keep you guys too long. It's been about thirty minutes. If you have questions, or if you got a different answer than I got. Because you, you could see I made a couple mistakes, right? Um, email me, and I'll take a look. And then if you guys want, if you guys want me, I'll work every one of these last ten problems. I will work on the whiteboard if you guys need me to do that, and I'll record it. Um, if you guys feel like that would help you, if you feel if you got most of the answers right, then I won't then I won't do it. But if you need me to take the time to do it, let me know, and I'll and I will. And we won't do this next time, or maybe even the time after that. But I'll get another problem in with where you have to convert between stationing and northing and easting like this. And maybe we'll do one with a horizontal curve, or maybe we'll put an angle break in there. And so you guys can get some more practice at this. Raphael, go ahead. Did, did you catch one that I messed up? No. Uh, I was going to ask you, uh, let's go over the 10 last questions and go over how to solve those. Okay. Uh, so we, we go detail. I, I, I think I would profit uh, from that. Okay, no problem. Here's what I'll try and do, uh, Raphael, in the next week or two is... is um, I'll get in front of the whiteboard and I'll, we'll, I'll do the right, we'll draw the triangle. I'll draw the triangles on the board and, and we'll work them and I'll do all the, we'll do the right triangle trig and a squared plus B squared equals C squared. And, and we'll do it. So you guys can see it. If that, if Raphael thinks that'll help. Yeah, absolutely. I know it'll probably help. Sure. It'll probably help a couple of my folks too. So, um, but at least you guys have the answers. So you know how you did. Right. And I, like I said, I did that in a CAD drawing. Cause I, I don't, I'm dyslexic and I wanted to make sure, um, that I had good coordinate values on those. Uh, but you guys can see, like, even I made that mistake on this one question, right? I, I added the five feet to this offset instead of subtracting it. Yeah, yeah, you got to watch that, right? That They design those questions that way on purpose, right? Because they know people are going to make those common mistakes like that. And I designed the problem and I made the mistake. So there you go. It's a good lesson. So, all right, guys. Well, hey, I appreciate you uh, tuning in. So next meeting... In about three weeks, uh, we're gonna do some. We're gonna talk about map projections, 
And um, I, we're going to even maybe set up a little simple map projection. Um, I'm trying to remember what they call it now. I think it's just called a tangent map projection. So we're, we're going to just maybe design a super simple tangent map projection in, um, in just some Python code. Um, so basically, it'll it'll let you input a uh, latitude, longitude, and get a northing and easting, or put in a northing and easting and get back a latitude, longitude. And we're just gonna we're just gonna code that up. Um, so it'll it'll hopefully help you guys understand kind of the math that's being done in your software that does math uh, that does math projections, and it'll teach you guys a little bit of Python coding if, if that's something that interests you. So that's on the 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 meeting agenda for next next month the end of this month into March and then the following month again I'll try and have another set of 25 questions ready so for you guys that are on the thank you for coming to the meeting today if you if you have things that you want me to cover in the next set of 25 problems message me shoot me an email or shoot me a text and let me know and I, I will whatever your weak spot is I'll put questions in that next set of 25 that that cover that because I don't care what what we're testing it doesn't matter to me so you guys let me know what you need to get prepped for the exams and then I'll I'll write questions for that for those uh for those topics okay uh, so, Landon Maurice has a question uh, oh okay hey uh quick question this is unrelated to this content but that's okay how would you find a uh, delta angle from just a radius and a curve length Okay, so um, if you have the curve length, that's a good question, Maurice. So if you if you have the curve length, you need the radius. So so to solve it to solve a curve, you got to have you got to have at least two pieces of info, right? So if you have the curve length and the radius, um, then you can figure out your length. And um, and and uh, so let's see, you want the delta. So what you do? This is how I would do it. And and Warren can jump in here because he's an old pro, but. So the, the way I would do it, it's been a long time since I've done this math, but if you have the if you have the uh, the curve length and the radius, you can figure out what that angle is in radians. So there's two pi radians in a full circle, and then you can convert from radians to decimal degrees, and then decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds. Okay. So here's what I here's what do this, Maurice. Um, e email that to me. If you send me an email, I will uh, I will put a couple of of those questions on the next set of twenty five for uh, for May, and then uh, we'll work them. We'll, we'll actually I'll get the calculator up and we'll do when we review them. We'll we'll work those curve problems. That's yeah, a good question. We need to put some curve stuff on here. So yeah, but just email me because I'll forget. Okay, now we'll show you guys how to work in radians and how to go back and forth from radians to decimal degrees and do all that stuff okay but yeah absolutely good good question yeah landon that makes sense because the text uh talk about degree of curve and, and yep. that's just a, a subset of using radians right yeah so yeah i've always kind of struggled with degree of curve a little bit yeah so you know what if i remember i'll try and show them how to do that both ways but yeah i usually just go to radians because i can remember two pi radians in a full circle that's a little bit easier for me to remember. So um, anyway, it's a good question, Maurice. Yeah, absolutely, guys, bring these kinds of questions and um, and we'll I'll put them in the sample sets and we'll we'll work them. Um, I didn't want I didn't want to try and get on the whiteboard today. Um, it's a little hard to get on the whiteboard with Zoom. Um, and it was, you know, it's probably going to take me an hour to go through all those questions on diagram one, but I, I will make time to do it. I'll, I'll record it so you guys can have it. Raphael, go ahead. Um, I think on the, on the curve, I think on the degree of a curve, uh, I think the degree of a curve is when the arc length is equal to 100. Oh, when the, yeah. So yeah. when the degree of the curve, well, there's two ways, right? Like we have railroad curve, which the arc is equal 100, right. and that's called the degree of the curve. Right. But if you have a horizontal curve. Uh, railroad the, curve, it's the chord, right? Yeah. Yes. And then you have the degree of a curve, you have an angle, which is the angles is equal to 100. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. So we'll work it both ways. Well, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll do that both ways. Thank you for my guys. Some of this stuff I haven't done for 15 or 20 years. It's been a long, long time. So, uh, so that's why I didn't want to, um, Maurice, that's why I didn't want to bust out and try and do a problem right now off the top of my head. But so let me practice. So I make sure I teach you the right way. And then we'll we'll cover it in the May meeting for sure. Okay. So um, all right, guys, it's about 40 minutes. So that's perfect. I'm trying to get you guys out of here on a lunch break. That's my goal.
So thank you for, for joining. And um, hopefully you guys, if you want to learn a little more about map projections, you can come back in three weeks and then uh, we'll do another sample set in uh, May and send me uh, the topics you want on the next set of 25 questions and, and we'll get them in there. All right. So thanks for coming, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Landon.